Hey Carter, why is America afraid of the number 10? Uh, why? Because it's in between 9 and 11. <sighs> I have never started with a 9 11 joke, and now I did. Do you feel ashamed at all, <laughs> at all for that? Slightly. Oh my god, you know what came up in my Facebook memories the other day? What's that? I had, okay, so, I love Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yes. Um, so you know Ramiel? Yes. The, yeah. The D8? Yep. Yeah, so I had messaged a friend last year around this time. No, it was two years ago around this time. And I was like, hey, can you can you do a Photoshop thing for me? And she was like, sure, sure thing. And I got the notification that two years ago she had tagged me in the Photoshop that I requested. Yeah. And it was Ramiel running into the Twin Towers. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Roman <laughs> Three Kingdoms. So, um, for part two, I, I didn't want to go that far. I did like half an hour stuff. Uh, in the first part, we only did the Yellow Turban Rebellion and the Battle of Hulao Gate. So we did both of those. Um, which we had seen shit from Hulao Gate in Way's campaign, so that mm. one wasn't anything new. Uh, for part two, I did the defense of Chu, uh, Chu Province, which I, for I didn't finish one of the hypotheticals. So it sent me up uh, to this mission here, where Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, and Zhao Yun are all in the middle of the Battle of Guandu, mm -hmm. um, a disturbance like Guandu, they call it, um, where they come across uh, Guan Yu. Mm -hmm. uh, and then both Cao Cao's army and Yuan Shao's army are f going, chasing after them as they're trying to leave the field. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also did one of the Extreme Legends, which is Defeat Lu Bu. So this one is um, Lu Bu uh, at one point takes over uh, Shu Province. Mm -hmm. Or no, he takes over Sha Pi. And in the story, Liu Bei gets help from Cao Cao in order to take it back. Mm -hmm. And Cao, Cao's, Cao Cao and Liu Bei kill Lu Bu in that area. This one is like, hey, yeah, so instead of... if uh, this is an else world where Liu Bei goes and fight and gets the help from Sun Se, who's of the Wu army, the mm. Wu army, and it's Sun Se. Sun Se, um, Yuri Lowenthal. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> Shu and Wu uh, take out Lu Bu in this one instead of Shu and Wei. Okay. So now we're gonna go through this one here, which um, so this is where we get um, a, a very important character. Mm -hmm. So, Zhao Yun's already on our side, uh, and we reunited with Guan Yu, and we were relieved to see each other again. Just like me today. <sighs> However, as long as they fought beneath Yuan Shao, it's less for power or something. Having realized this, Liu Bei left Yuan Shao and went to visit Liu Biao within Jing province. He's not that important. No. Uh, Liu Biao welcomed him warmly and gave him troops and horses in order to station him in Xinyi. Or Xinyi. What do you want to... Once there, Liu Bei and his men kept the peace, and there he remained for seven years. However, after defeating Yuan Shao and conquering Hua Bei, Cao Cao began moving his troops south. So this is already happening after Cao Cao took over um, Yuan Shao's forces. Mm -hmm. Yet again, Liu Bei found himself against Cao Cao. In order to oppose the brilliance of Cao Cao's army, Liu Bei would need wise officers of his own. And to do that, while Liu Bei, Bei contemplated the matter, a man by the name of Sh Chu Shu. Chu Shu. Chu Shu. Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Yun. Guan Yun. They got his name wrong. Well, whatever. So, Chu Shu. Now, that level is, uh... <laughs> a little, uh... So, uh, I played through the little bonus... Oh, they call it ambition mode. Mm -hmm. um, I played through it as Chu Shu. I was originally going to surprise you with that, but I already told you before we started that. Yeah, yeah this mission is probably going to be really quick. Mm -hmm. So I get to uh, talk about what I did. Oh, yes. So, um, I just want to see if there's a cutscene. Okay. Here first. Yes, here we go. He's very much like a nihilist. Mm-hmm. Mood. <laughs> yeah, right. You got the green shit on. 
suspicious. I can't disagree. I didn't realize how early he showed up. However, I can't provide you with that which you lack, Lord Fay. You approach knowing the identity of our brother. Oh shit, Guan Yu's like, yeah, this guy's suspicious. forgot about this. This is where... Mm -hmm. So, you're here to offer your service. Oh, well, not necessarily. I have heard, actually, talk of a wise man in these parts, known as the Sleeping Dragon. Oh, the Sleeping Dragon is really important to the story. We've already seen him. So it's uh, it's implied. I don't know. I think it's it's implied that uh, Chu Shu is um, a pupil of the Sleeping Dragon mm -hmm. because he's like the whole story is that if you remember on the Way campaign, they made a big deal about this Eight Gates formation yeah. mission, um, and ugh, what's it called. They were like, someone broke through the Eight Gates formation, and then Cao Cao's army went and we fought Chu Shu, and essentially the hypothetical, we got him on our side. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the Eight Gates formation, they're all saying that, like, yeah, this shit's impossible, and Chu Shu's like, nah, B, I got this shit. Mm -hmm. um, so now I get to talk about what I did. Oh, yes. So... I'm really bad at paying attention to Dynasty Warriors. Yeah. Because there's a lot going on. There's a hell of a lot going on. There's I don't blame so you, to be honest. There's so fucking much going on. I've played this series since fucking Dynasty Warriors 5. So I I know, like, a shit ton about the story already because I've been invested for a while. Yeah. So... But it can be really hard to get into. Yeah. So uh, it's really hard for me to, to, like... It's really overwhelming. So, when I was uh, going to and coming home from my trip to Ottawa, I decided to look for a podcast. So, initially I went on Google Books, and I wanted to find a translation of The Three Kingdoms. I couldn't find one. Oh yeah, that's, I tried that's too to, big. I tried to find an audiobook. Couldn't find one. So, <laughs> I started looking for podcasts, and I found a podcast of a Chinese guy who translated it and he's also done all of this work into like making maps of where the battles were in which years and like who is connected to who in the stories and he did a really good job at it so um I've been listening to his podcast so that I can first of all learn how to pronounce the fucking names of these characters <laughs> Because I was going on Wikipedia and, like, audibly listening to it and, like, keep hitting replay so I can be like, okay, how do I do this? Because Chinese is a sun language. So, it's, um... Also, we were over-exaggerating on Sao Sao's name. We were going too high on the pitch. We were going Sao Sao. It's Sao Sao. Okay. Yeah. So, like, trying to figure out the pitch and stuff was, like, a really big thing for me. So finding like finding someone who is Chinese who understands the pitch, who speaks the language, so that I can get these pitches. But like also his uh, his translation is really good. So what he'll do is like each episode is a different battle, and he'll give you like essentially the direct translation, but like fixed for English grammar, and then he'll give you the TLDR, which is super fucking helpful. So I've been learning about the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, 
and right now I'm on episode 10. So I'm still super, super early on, but I can tell you all about Cao Cao's father and how he was raised by the eunuchs and how terrible the eunuchs are. Oh, yeah. But then I can also go off on, like, this whole thing about the eunuchs of the Roman Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you know that, um, after the, uh, trying to get the words together so after the Roman Catholic Church especially essentially disbanded their eunuchs cause, so like they had eunuchs that were like in power like how they are here yeah but within the church so that got disbanded eventually like they kill all the eunuchs but they like wanted to use uh, castration still as a control mechanism so they would uh, take poor boys the Catholic Church would take poor boys from villages like poor boys that had like nice singing voices bring them to the church and castrate them and then have them sing at the church for the rest of their lives to bring money to their parents Oof, my God. And they were called castrados that's Oof. Yeah, I think the last castrato died in the 20s. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a, there's a single recording of a castrato, and he's singing Ave Maria. Okay. And it's super haunting, because it's like, this voice doesn't... This voice sounds completely void of gender, in a way, huh. is the best way I can put it. But it's like, it's haunting. It's like, the voice sounds neither male nor female, neither young nor old. Hmm. Yeah. That's strange. It's, yeah, like the castrato voice is interesting, but it's so sad that it was like a control mechanism of the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyways, fuck the Roman Catholic Church. Fuck the eunuchs in this case. Oof. But. Yeah, I. My god, it's so fucking much. The fucking romance of the three kingdoms. Oh, yeah. So, uh, something that I. I, um, I think I remember telling you about this, but I can't remember right now. Um. Something that every Dynasty Warriors game has done, because I know that this story is fucking... So there's so big. much to unpack with this story. So every single game includes... Um, they call it an encyclopedia, but it's basically the most important moments of the story all summarized. Mm -hmm. And they separate them into chapters. Mm -hmm. So I could show you that after after this if you want to see it. Uh, towards the end of like this part. Uh, honestly, it, I think I just want to keep going through with the podcast before that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's 150 episodes of the podcast that are just battle. And then there's uh, roughly 25 episodes that go through each individual minor character. Mm hmm. And it's. <coughs> oh my god. And these episodes are like an hour long. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. Like. Holy shit. Just a there's hell of a lot. So much. And it's like. The guy who's doing it is doing such a great fucking job. Yeah. Um, if you if you do want to listen to his podcast, go to three number three kingdomspodcast dot com, and I'll give you like links of like where to download his podcast because that's like the name of the podcast, and also all the information that you would ever fucking need on Romans Three Kingdoms is there. Yeah. He actually made a post like today because I was checking his website. The uh, his little map of uh, each, every single character in the story and their relationship with every other character. Yeah. The map went down. Because there was too much information. Oh my god. Because <laughs> he was like hosting it on Google Drive. Oh no! And the file was just too big. <laughs> oh no. So now he has to find a new way to like get the file up. Oh my god. 
Because that's how fucking big it is. Yeah, that's how many characters there oh are. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I fucked up uh, in this mission mm -hmm. because I'm pretty sure it was a hypothetical if I successfully did exactly what. Oh, there's. Mm -hmm. So the whole story is like, yeah, um, I'm good. She, she was like, I'm good. But here's the motherfucker that you want. Mm -hmm. Juge Leong. This guy's one of the most important characters in the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take a drink. <laughs> Shoes as benevolence. <laughs> that you take a shot every time they say benevolence. Mm -hmm. That was three shots right there. God damn. This is like the rest of the drinking game. <laughs> yeah. Every every um, faction in this game has their like buzzwords. Mm -hmm. Are you sure this is what you want? Yes. <laughs> Carter's doing like a drinking motion every time. Every time. <laughs> so, his role in the story is very, very minor. Choo choo. Mm -hmm. Literally, I think his only task is to simply, like, let Liu Bei know of Sleeping Dragon, of Zhu Ge Liang. So, I think if we did the hypotheticals, which involves us, like, going through that eight gates formation, um, perfectly, he would join the cause. But, I don't think we got him. Oh, well. So, something that's, like... So, I'll, I'll just quickly show this to you okay. now. So, it's an encyclopedia. They have the history. So, they have basically all of the most important sections here. Yeah. So, that's... That's what they do, and they kind of like put it into like little cliff notes. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I was wanting to show you. Every Dynasty Warriors game has done that. So, okay, let's do. Okay. What, what? So something that um, that I think is interesting. Oh, is... there was not. There's no hypotheticals. Oh, All right. Nice. Anyway. So something I think is interesting is um, the podcast that I'm listening to, when uh, they give you descriptions of the characters. They're really intense descriptions. Yeah. Like, because the guy, like, gives a literal translation, but, like, adjusted for English grammar, and then, it, and then it, a summary. Yeah. So, the descriptions will be, like, this man had the head of a tiger, and, like, earlobes that went down to his knees. And it's like, what if there was, like, a Dynasty Warriors where they, like, took these these literal descriptions of people. Uh, what was the tiger guy's name? I do not remember. There's so many fucking characters. Because um, every... Tiger is very, very much... I can tell you for a fact, mm -hmm. whoever got branded with, like, the tiger head thing, mm -hmm. most likely from Wu. Yeah. Every single, every single kingdom has its own animal that represents it. Yeah. And the tiger is, uh, like, for the Red Army, for mm -hmm. Wu. So... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I want to see like, I would love to see like, the like actual portraits match match the descriptions. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, we're gonna play as Yuge Long for this one because we played as both Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. I know. I gotta switch the weapons. God damn it. Um. <clears throat> Sure, let's do that one. Um, Victory Cry, Havoc, Mighty Roar, Attack Boost. Oh my gosh, he's made videos too? He's done videos? Yeah, he's done videos. 
one thing that I that I really want to do is I want to put out a video of like like which characters from Dynasty Warriors, mm -hmm. like the whole the which characters from Romance of the King Three Kingdoms, I think would have would like be good enough to like get um oh my an upgrade. god what what happened oh my god so so the the podcast host yeah his wife got him lego figures of the characters from legends of the three kingdoms and he made a fucking comic with them are you serious i'm fucking crying right now oh my god I think I just fucking stopped the recording. Give me a second here. I think I just stopped the recording. Oh, uh, sorry. Let me let me sync this back up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. Sorry about that. I clicked a, the wrong button when I was trying to call my horse, and it was just like, "Hey, you want to fucking just?" I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I'm crying because this is so funny. Like his wife got him Lego figures of all of the characters from Legends of of Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and he made fucking comics with them. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is hilarious. So yeah, I, I want to to put together like a list of like. Which characters I feel like should get the main character treatment. Because every game they, mm -hmm. like, take some characters and they, like, give them new main character treatment. Like, in this game they put, like, Lydion and Yue Jin, uh, Yujin, um... He has a full fucking timeline where you can click and it just gives you all of the events that happen oh, in yeah. that year. Oh, yeah. Romance. Yeah. Oh my god. There's just so much. He has merch. Alright. Come on. He's got magnets. And coasters. Alright, come on guys. Over the, over the, over the bridge please. Over the bridge. Yes. I just, I can't get over how big this story oh, is. Oh no. Okay, so I'm on the guy's, like, website. He's a journalist. He's a journalism professor, actually. Good for him. Alright, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's follow Liu Bei. Why am I looking at this guy's... <laughs> looking at his resume. Oh shit, I have to fucking... Yeah, I, I just... I can't get over, like... How big this story is. I really want to go to an escape room with you. I was looking at escape rooms near us, and I found one that has uh, easy puzzles, and one of them is uh, is based off Death Note, where you're in Light Yagami's bedroom, trying to figure out if he's Kira or not. Huh. And I feel like I would do well in that just because of how well I know the Death Note lore. I feel like that's one where. Uh... If they had, if they got something wrong in that, in uh, in that escape room, it'd be like, oh, well, this, you know. Well, actually. Actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to my first escape room when I was in Ottawa, and it was really fun. Yeah, I've, I've never actually done this. I room absolutely before. fucking failed, and we played on the easiest difficulty they had. 
the easiest difficulty they had actually was uh was three out of five stars. Huh. Difficulty. So. Oh, I gotta go around. The Death Note one for the place that's near us is a a one star difficulty. Really. So. Hopefully we would be able to actually do that. All right, we gotta go to this garrison. Mm -hmm. All right. Like a moth to the flame. This is where oh, yeah. Maybe next time you get paid, like, we could do a date? Um, Maybe. It's, it depends on, like, you know, depends on our schedules. Yeah. Well, of course. But yeah. It's, um, escape rooms are $25 a person. Okay. So it's the same as, like, going out for all-you-can-eat food. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, like, not that bad at all. Oh no. I'm like. I want to keep listening to this podcast, but I feel like I shouldn't be listening to it like how I was listening to it on the train. What do you mean? Because on the train I was literally just listening to episodes back to back to back. Like nonstop. And I feel like that's part of why I'm so overwhelmed. Uh, yeah, you you get. I feel like it's it's probably good to listen to like. One every two days, or one every, like, week? Yeah. I know it's probably, like, a shit ton, but, like, this is the kind of story where it's, like, this is tied in with fucking Chinese mythology and history. Yeah. So. Mm. Oh, it's... shit. Fuck, there's another enemy down there. It's so much. Did I? Okay. I feel like I told you as a person, but I haven't told the audience. So when I was on my train to Ottawa, there was an unsupervised child on the train. Wait, what? Did I not tell you about this? No. So, I was sitting in single seats, and then on the other side of the train, like directly across, were double seats. And there was a, there was a woman with her child. And the woman was on her phone the whole time, like, having a conversation, not paying attention to her kid. And her kid, with no mask on, oh, no. picking his fucking nose, oh, no. scratching his ass, was going up to people and touching them. Oh, God. And I was like, every time this kid came close to me, I was like giving the mom a really dirty look because she was literally right across from me. Yeah. And I was like, excuse me? Like, you want to watch your fucking kid? And she's just on her fucking phone just not watching her child. And it's like, if a kid is on a train and they're crying because, like, they're frustrated, they're hungry, it's uncomfortable, they're bored, that's totally understandable. Because, like, it's a train, it's kind of boring, it's kind of uncomfortable. But if you're just straight up not fucking watching your child and they're going around touching people in the middle of a pandemic, you are a terrible fucking human being. Ooh. You are doing an excellent job. And it's like, everyone was complaining, but they, they can't kick her off. Because they'd have to stop the entire train. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking... So it's like such a frustrating situation. Yeah, that's really frustrating. It's so like on my way back, there was there was a kid that was like screaming. Yeah. But that's whatever, because it's like okay, yeah, it's an uncomfortable situation. I understand. But like this kid was like at least being supervised. The kid on the train going there was not. Yeah. Mhm. Mm oh my God. <sighs> oh shit! More ambush troops. Yeah. It's like. <sighs> Oh, fuck off. Fuck oh, off! No, no. Oh, fuck off! If one of them hits us, we'll be fuck off, fuck off. I'm, ugh, this is a sight. Mm. No. Come here, you fucking asshole. There we go. Come here, fuckers. I remember there was, like, one, one of the episodes of the podcast was just graphic detail of these three guys 
sacrificing animals and bathing in their blood to claim brotherhood? I'm sorry, what? How many of them? Uh, three. It wasn't Liu Bei, was it? I don't remember who it was. Because... Does uh, he have two brothers who aren't actually related to him? Yes, yes. Zhang Fei and Guan Yu. Yep, 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 it's those three. Because in Dynasty Warriors, they refer to it as, uh... They're sitting under, like, um... They're in, like, a peach garden. Yeah, no, they are in a peach garden, and the peaches are blossoming, so it's the flowers... But they're sacrificing large amounts of animals and bathing in their blood. Oh my god, that's... That is... <laughs> that's something they don't cover in Dynasty Warriors, right? There's a lot of things that they don't cover in Dynasty Warriors. Uh, I've told you about Shao Duin, right? Oh, oh yeah, Eyeball Guy. Yeah, the guy oh, who... Oh yeah. The actual... The, the story is that he yeah. got shot in the eye, and to fill the enemy with fear... He rips his eyeball out of his socket and eats it. Yep, yep. There was a a whole episode of the podcast that was a graphic description of that. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. like, this story does not fuck around. No, it does not. But did you know about them bathing in... I did not know about that one. And I'm, I'm... It makes sense why they wouldn't say that. So every time I come across something like that now... Oh, no. There's... I'm absolutely gonna talk about it. Oh, gosh. Every single, uh, oh my god, Zhang Liao. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, but, fucking, uh, every single Dynasty Warriors game mentions the three of them, uh, becoming sworn brothers. Yeah. Literally the only thing they talk about is them in a peach garden, uh, with drinks. Yeah, no, it's animal blood. And I was just like, what the f- wait, I was like, ugh. That's... Okay, Liu Bei, go to the exit. Thank you. Yeah. Alright. That's... So, this yeah. mission is uh, was very important for a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, it act- This mission, if I played as Zhao Yun, it's Zhao Yun's most famous moment. Mm-hmm. Um, because... Do you remember I showed you the intro to Dynasty Warriors 8? Yeah. Where, no, uh, 7. Mm. Where there's a baby, yes. and Zhao Yun, it, that's Liu Bei's child, Liu Shan, who is the next in line mm-hmm. after Liu Bei. So the whole story is that they left Liu Shan behind in a building because Cao Cao's forces were coming after them. So Zhao Yun went back by himself to save this kid strapped to his chest. Mm-hmm. So that's like Zhao Yun's crowning like heroic moment. I just remembered another really graphic thing. Really? Yes. Um, I forget what battle it was, because, again, there's just so much fucking going on. Yeah. But they essentially massacred a bunch of dogs beforehand, collected their blood, guts, and shit, and attacked the enemy forces with the blood, guts, and shit of dogs. Goddamn. (laughs) Yeah. That's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, we're at 33. Think I can do one more? I think you can do one more. We're gonna do one of these Extreme Legends ones. So this is a hypothetical where I believe they actually use, like, Chushu. Oh, Matt Hardy's dishes came out today. Oh, shit. Yeah, his wife physically cut them out of him. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we have Chushu on our, uh, on our side for this. Mm-hmm. And, um... Ooh, what? Liu Biao died of illness. Oh, whoa, that's new. Liu Kong quickly surrendered. Liu Kong? Meanwhile, Liu Bei gathered together his many followers and headed for Jiang Jiangling. The presence of these additional people show, slowed the pace of the march considerably, though, and Cao Cao's army quickly gave chase after Liu Bei. Finding himself in a tight spot, Liu Bei was joined once again by Chu Shu, who had previously left his side. Mm-hmm. So, he told Liu Bei to meet up with Sun Quan and Liu, Liu Xi, Qi, and provide him with a strategy that would ensure certain victory. We found courage, Liu Bei decided to turn and face Cao Cao's attack. So this is a hypothetical where they use Chu Shu in this battle. Which, mm-hmm. this is the same map, Cheng Bao, Cheng Bao, that we just were at. Yeah. So... 
Uh, why don't we play as Guan Ping for this one? Guan Ping is the first son of Guan Yu. Um, he's notable for carrying a giant fucking Final Fantasy VII sword. Mm -hmm. So, let's see here. Uh, I love that the one thing that, uh, oh, new shot of Brandy with Scorpio Sky. Oh, we gotta watch that Scorpio after. Sky. Scorpio Sky. Yeah. What was I saying? I like that the only, like, with me aggressively listening to this podcast and only being able to catch a few things... The few things that I've been catching have been, like, the most graphic things. Oh, yeah. No, I, I had a feeling that sooner or later. Like, Dynasty Warriors takes all of that shit out because, yeah. so obviously. The only, the only things I remember are the graphic things. I remember there's actually, uh, there's a couple of anime. Mm -hmm. Some, there was a bunch of anime that was made around... Romance of the Three Kingdoms as well. Mm -hmm. One of them I remembered had this really fucking like bloody berserk level of gore scene with Lu Bu, mm -hmm. where uh, he goes on a fucking killing spree, and he does this while singing operatically. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, "What?" The Actually, I need to find this anime because this is probably you know what you said about like you want to see what uh, something where they look exactly like these visceral yeah. descriptions this is probably the closest like this anime mm -hmm. it's probably the closest that they've gotten to those like visual like visceral descriptions mm -hmm. so all right we gotta yeah like these descriptions were making me think of like smt demons yeah and stuff like that All right, come on. Yeah, we got it. We got it. All right, we're just trying to get through all these. I feel like with with me listening to this podcast now, because I'm doing it for you. <laughs> I'm doing it so that I can understand what's going on and I can commentate on it while while you're playing, so that you don't have to talk. The whole time, you know. I feel like so you can just. I feel like you you want me to uh, uh, do the same kind of thing in the future for a game that you be really passionate about. Possibly, <laughs> but but what I'm getting at is I feel like with all of the information that I am getting, I'm eventually gonna be at the point where I know more about the story than you. Oh yeah, if you're listening to an actual podcast based yeah, where, on that, you're gonna Well I'm listening to a guy literally translate it. I know more about Dynasty Warriors, you're gonna know more about Romance of the Three Kingdoms. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're that's what we're getting at mm -hmm. here. So Yeah. Uh, okay, so I just have to quick mad dash over Ooh, to what this is last that? garrison. What would be my Dynasty Warriors? Cause, cause I am playing Doctor Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. Um, what's what's a what's a game that you've played with like a shit ton of story in it? Like what what games? Um, oh, Soon Chuan. That's another. He's another guy who. Uh, so, uh, Wu is very much all about um family. Mm -hmm. um, that's their kind of big thing. Mm -hmm. Ironically, their family gets killed the most. <laughs> I get fucked. Um, it's like the shortest amount of time for um, between the rulers of Wu. Mm -hmm. Because it's Sun, uh, Sun Chuan's the third ruler. The first two rulers oh, get yeah. killed pretty quickly. Yes, there's one ruler who ascends the throne at like the age of seven, uh -huh. and because he can't do anything, the em the Empress Dowager is the one who makes all the decisions. But she can't go to court because she's a woman, so she has to hide behind a screen. That's a thing I remembered. That's a thing I remembered from the. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I think that was Empress Dowager Dong, but. They don't... I feel like they're not going to the Empress Dowagers in this, do they? Dowager Dong. Yeah. That sounds... What's her last name? Does it give a last name? Her, her title is Empress Dowager, and her name is Dong. Dong. Yeah. Because there's a character... There's a DLC character in, um... Fucking... What's it called? 
fuck. Our strategy got fucked. Um, so, what's it called? There's a character in Dynasty Warriors 9, who's DLC, mm -hmm. who is essentially the daughter of... I don't think she's a real character, but she's uh, the daughter of Dong Zhuo, who is like the big evil guy. Yeah. Who's like... Who, um, okay, so I should probably tell you what the title of Empress Dowager means. Yeah, I need to know that. So, Empress is the, uh, is the wife of the Emperor. Empress Dowager is a title given to the wife of the Emperor when her husband dies. Huh. So, let's say there's a new Emperor. Like, so it would be the Emperor, the old Emperor's son. Yeah. So, the new Emperor's mother would be, instead of being the Empress, she would be the Empress Dowager. Okay. Yeah. There's so many fucking Empress Dowagers. Yeah, this game so many does, fucking emperors died. This game does not go into, like, any of those. Okay, yeah, because I... This podcast goes into, like, all of the fucking Emperor's Dowagers yeah. and, like, who this they game, were, what family they're from. Yeah, this game focuses more on the battles in rather than the political intrigue. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, like, a fucking... What would be my equivalent of Dynasty Warriors? So, like, the issue is I play a lot of JRPGs. Yeah. So it's all a lot of dense story. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think of something that, like... like everything like, I play is dense story. Like, I'm trying to think of something where, like, I would have to put this much research as you're putting in for this game. Mm -hmm. And I can't really think of... I can't really think of one. No, because I don't really play history games. Yeah. Mm, I mo I yeah. I essentially just play JRPGs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's uh, jump through here. There's one more guy down here. I Where mean, you could go into like the intricacies of like the the block system in Catherine. Or how about South Park? I love the Stick of Truth. Oh God. <laughs> no, actually, Stick of Truth is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, can we record that on here? Stick of Truth? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Stick of Truth and Fractured Butthole are on PS4. I know you had Fractured Butthole on Switch. Uh, I have it on, on Switch. Switch, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure both games are on PS4. Fuck. So. Uh, this level trips me out so fucking hard. Mm -hmm. I hate it. Um, yeah. Because um, if you start at the bottom area, there's just a whole bunch of different cliff sides, and it's a, tr like... It's such a trap because you have no idea which ones have ladders and which ones don't. Mm -hmm. You can't see it on the map because the map is so small. So yeah, yeah. I feel like South Park would be the only thing. Funny enough, I'm not a South Park fan. I wasn't really a South Park fan growing up. Yeah. But like, there's very few South Park things I remember. There. Do you remember the whole arc? Where Kenny was a Maho Shoujo? Uh, a magical girl. Wasn't that the. when they were doing. when they were LARPing? Yes, and Kenny was a magical girl the yeah. whole time. So. Like, you, they, they expanded that in Stick of Truth from what I remember. Yes, they did. So. there's a whole. You, you remember how there's the whole subplot in the, in, in the whole LARPing episodes? Uh, the whole subplot with like the Japanese and stuff. I don't actually. It's all one big Evangelion reference. Really? Yes. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> and that is why I love Kenny as a Maho Shoto. <laughs> no, actually, like that whole that whole fucking arc was just an Evangelion reference. Which is also like the last time I watched the arc. <laughs> so there's very few episodes I remember. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember one the, like. One of the main... Oh, I better get this before Liu Bei fucking dies. No! Oh, no. Did I tell you about my uh, my Mr. Hanky no. toy I had? Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Oh, fuck. I might actually lose this mission. Oh, no. I need to kill Sao Sao quickly. Go, kill him! Come here, you motherfucker! Thank you! Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. 
If Liu Bei lost, I would have lost the mission. I'm terrible. Did I ever tell you about my Mr. Hanky toy? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so when I was 13, I was given a Mr. Hanky toy. So Mr. Hanky the Christmas poop. Yeah, yeah. And I had, like, this really weird group of friends my last year of elementary school. And that's also, like, when I started smoking weed. Okay. And my friends and I all started smoking weed at the same time. Okay. And my one friend decided to use he was high as an excuse to flush my Mr. Hanky down the toilet. Okay. Uh, yeah, we were no longer friends after that. Yeah, that's fucking... Yeah. That's fucking... It's really upsetting. So, episode of South Park that you remembered. Uh, the only one I really remember is, like, the Pink Eye episode, and that was for the first season. Mm -hmm. Um, which was, it was their Halloween episode. Yeah. Um... Anyways, uh, I don't actually think this this mission here, the tri the Chirby mission, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is the hypothetical, I don't think it's the hypothetical split mm -hmm. for this campaign. It was in Wei's campaign. Yeah. Um, because Wei had a lot less, um, a lot less missions to go through. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think this one is just going to be the regular side where we win. Mm-hmm. Um. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this one. We're at, like, 46 minutes, so. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be it, guys. Um, you got any, uh, final words to say? I'm going to look for more 9-11 jokes. <sighs> See you guys. Yes.